This is the one true Omni Gamer Boss Braun. This is the informational emperor True Backlash. And the first lady of media, Blue. Coming to you with another movie review. Today is a very special day. It's the sequel to the critically acclaimed and fan favorite movie, The Avengers Age of Ultron. Na, 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 na. Well, let's just get it out the way. It's a very excellent, fabulous movie where no one really is going to complain about it. But since we have to do our due diligence as awesome journalists and uh, media lovers, we shall explain to you why it's very awesome, perfect, and something you should go see immediately, if not sooner. Take the kids. Take the kids. Little, little, little language. Little language. But still, nothing they probably haven't heard already. <laughs> okay, story time with Backlash. Thanks. Well, thanks, Bronze. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so if you've watched Captain America and a Winter Soldier from beginning to the very end, and if you watched both season one and up to current season two of Age of the Shield, you know that Ahydra has since taken over Shield, and Shield is in shambles and disarray. For all the Avengers know, Shield was dead. So, while in the car in the show Age of the Shield, Phil Coulson is picking up the slack. And it might not even count because apparently Josh Whedon doesn't want the TV and the movies, doesn't want full close of back. I'm gonna breathe, I'm gonna breathe. The Avengers don't know this anyway, so they have to take they have to take the reins of world saving. Their first subject, Baron von Strucker, who has Loki's who has Loki's mind control scepter, as well as a pair of powerful uh, assets in the wake in the names of Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. Um, two twins who pretty much have a hate on for one of the Avengers. Now, while all this is going on, the Avengers get back the mind staff, uh, the, the mind control staff. But it comes, it pretty much, uh, it pretty much uh, worries Tony that he said in the last movie they weren't soldiers. And essentially, he doesn't want to see a world where all the Avengers are going to die. So he coerces Bruce Banner to help him create this robot used by this giant AI where Loki's, Loki's staff has a part consciousness in it to save the world and make sure that he can save the world while, while the Avengers don't have to. His name is Ultron. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Ultron turns evil. What a shock. What a shock. What a twist. He, he's trying to be a well-intentioned extremist, but... His views are leave much to desires. He pretty much tricks Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and helping them with this plan on the basis of helping them save the world the obligatory old-fashioned way, but still killing the Avengers. He really just wants to to just change the world entirely, literally change the world. So, with the twins and his access to some pretty techy stuff, he's going to give the Avengers the biggest challenge they've ever had. Well, you know, I when it comes to the story, who wants to go first? I guess I'll go first. When it comes to the story, I am uh, actually of two minds on this. Actually, I'm of multiple minds. But uh, I, I, w I will try to sum it up so I won't give you a thesis on it. Uh, for the, the purpose of the story for the movie as it is right now in the movie-verse, I enjoyed the story. It, it, it's your classical humans try to create a better mousetrap Humans, humans try to play God. Both attempts don't quite end up as they intended, uh, which uh, which parlays into you know saving the world from uh, terror they created while having uh, uh, you know comical quips and uh, catchphrases all over the place, more or less. Now, where I'm having an issue is is the Ultron story himself. Those those in the know, aka your, you know, local geek and or nerd, know that Ultron was not, in fact, invented by Bruce Banner or uh, Tony Stark, was created by Hank Pym, correct? Correct. And we'll be seeing him being played by Michael Douglas in the Ant-Man movie. And he's not even the Ant-Man. For those people who 
known to know in the 6-1 continuity. He was the first Ant-Man. He probably still is. We'll see. But in this movie, Scott Lang takes the role. He's a legacy character in the 616 universe. Won't spoil too much of that movie, but essentially they did a lot of retconning to make it all fit to begin with for the Ant-Man movie. But now back to the Age of Ultron movie. And thank you, Informational Emperor. It's always good to have one around, people. Uh, anywho, that's exactly, and he's absolutely correct. They did a ton of retconning for the origin of Ultron, where Hank Pym actually created Ultron, similar to what Tony wanted to do, was to be like a peaceful, like, solution robot for all of the humanity's troubles. And, uh, that sort of scenario, which, you know, weirdly enough, Ultron, well, not weirdly, but predictably, Ultron portrays the master like in the movie, but still had a connection through Hank Pym's, uh, I guess, not at the time, wife, girlfriend, but wasp. Yeah, yeah, well, wife and girlfriend. Wife and girl. I guess once you're married, you're no longer a girlfriend, you're the wife. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's it. But, again, with the story, um, the, the third mind I have is the fact that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver... They are now classified as enhanced and not mutants. People, you do know that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are the children of everyone's favorite mutant radical, Magneto, Magneto which was awesome until Marvel and Fox, right? Yeah, Marvel and Fox. Have a little spat on who owns what. So now they're just saying, forget mutants. Mutants don't exist. It's enhanced humans or inhumans. Which I think is a total discredit to Quicksilver and Scar Scar Scarlet Witch in general. The way they had the maneuver, and we've done uh, Days of Future's Past review, to get to get Quicksilver in two movies and imply that Scarlet Witch was in Future's Past was nothing but nostalgic. But they said, hey, hey, this, 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 ki this kid's baby daddy is a mutant, so hence they're mutants, so they come with us. It's like, no, 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 no. Wanda and Quicksilver were Avengers, and Wanda's Quicksilver were Avengers, specifically Wanda, who she stayed with the Avengers for a very long time, while Quicksilver went to gallivant off with X-Factor, but he still wasn't a long-time Avenger too, and married one of the Inhumans, so it was like, we get him, so I was like, oh, jeez, so, you know, that, it's, it's amazing how that worked out. Amazing how it worked out, but in general, confusing to Marvel, its own storyline but you know what I, I'm I've gone too far into it in, in already yeah that's what I was trying to say <clears throat> so to sum up yes I like the story but I don't like the changes they had to make in order to make it work they should keep it pure man pure you know blue I actually agree with both you and Backlash because I also did like the story, loved the story. I thought there were some things about it though that I would have preferred uh, them not to have uh, changed and you guys did a real good job of mentioning why. I also feel that, you know, the story had elements of biblical proportions and many, many references throughout. It didn't seem that it was trying to literally come across with a, an actual perspective, but it kept making references to, you know, the second coming and, and, and God and gods and, um, you know, uh, different things you'll, you'll see throughout the movie. I found that just interesting. Wasn't quite sure what to make of it, but nonetheless, I thought, um, that there were also some things that you sort of saw coming in previous um, um, renditions of Avengers with like love interesty type stuff. So you'll see a little bit of that coming in the movie, and I thought that, and I thought that was also something that would you know um, kind of bring something to the movie that people were anticipating for a while. Um, overall, I just can't wait to get to the other parts other than the storyline because more of what I would say is kind of redundant. I like the story. I thought it was really good. It kept your, your attention for sure. And um, that being said, I'll move on to the next segment. Don't think I said any better, any better than the two of you. <laughs> well, um, to elaborate on my feelings, it's like, 
let's put it this way. I like the Street Fighter movie, the original Street Fighter movie with Raul Julia and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Where am I going with this? Most video game fans, especially Street Fighter fans, would gladly put lighter fluid on that movie and throw it into a bonfire because while the most of the character motivations and characterizations were true, not everyone, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, they weren't, um, the movie just completely changed everything about, about it. Um, the Avengers is not, Age of Ultron is not nearly that bad with it, but um, I'm okay with the changes. I mean, I'm not okay with the cha changes outside of the movie or how the 616 comics are pretty much being stupid right now about everything. But in, in terms of the movie, it don't make sense, you know, so I'm not too angry about it. Um, there were a couple things here and there, like, uh, this isn't much of a spoiler. They don't tell you what happens to Betty Ross in this movie, and that's kind of important if you do watch the movie. So, uh... So, I know what you're talking about, all those scenes. <laughs> yeah, they, they uh, mentioned... All they mentioned, I wanted to say was, Betty. <laughs> I mean, so it's like, they mentioned, where's this missing person? No, where is this missing person? Hey, I don't remember you. Cameo, cameo, cameo. <laughs> right. I mean, right, I, and don't right. get me wrong, Betty Ross hasn't been seen since the Edward Norton Hulk movie, but... She would kind of play a big role in here, and, I, and that, that part confused me, but that is the most nitpickiest of nitpicks. So, as far as the story goes, it's it's not as, as seamless as the first movie, and it does change up a bit, but I greatly enjoyed it. Don't get it twisted. I loved it. <laughs> well, speaking about, like, the, the uh, characters, let's talk about the characters. I went first last time, so someone will go first this time. That would be me. Okay. Um, I gotta say this. Um, I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you fanboys here. Scarlet Witch was pregnant during this filming. <gasps> oh no, not Scarlet Witch! How is I'm, she gonna I'm, assassinate people carrying the child? Black Widow, Black Widow, sorry. <laughs> not Scarlet Witch, Black Widow. Sorry, Elizabeth Olsen, don't, don't hunt me down. Okay, because you said Scarlet Witch to me prior, and I'm yeah. thinking... Black Widow, Black okay, Widow. Yeah, yeah okay, sorry. Cool. So Scarlett Johansson, that's her name. Scarlett Johansson was pregnant. <laughs> a lot of so, the Scarlets here. That being yeah. said, Scarlet. That yeah. being said, they had to use the old. So confusing. So confusing. They had to use the. They used a lot of stunt women and a lot of sitcommy blocking the lower half of her body shots for certain parts of the filming. Now there's clearly scenes where she clearly was in a shape enough to do her stunts and stuff. But for the better part of the middle of the movie, they were pretty much hiding her baby belly, which is fine, but. I think it kind of took a little bit away from her. They did try to make up with some of the characterization for which Ultron, what part of what Ultron indirectly does to the Avengers, but I think compared to everything else, she got the most time taken away from her from one of the, most of the OGZ Avengers. Tony, they have to, they have to make him, they have to put the weight of Tony's decisions on him again. Captain America has a movie coming out, so they gotta give him screen time. Uh, they gotta give Thor screen time because he's got a move, another movie coming out. Plus, he's starting to figure things out for himself. Um, as far as the Hawkeye and Hulk go, they did fantastic. And <laughs> part of what they did with the Hulk does involve uh, Black Widow. But I felt this time out, both of these characters received so much characterization, considering one hasn't been getting wasn't one isn't part of the hey I'm getting three movies club. Is part of Mar official Marvel Cinematic Universe, like the other heavy hitters, and the other one was brainwashed for a better part of the first movie, first Avengers movie. And they went to town, and they made these characters so good. Um, I'm disappointed how they... Between Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 and uh, this movie, I'm kind of disappointed how they, they uh, dealt with Hydra. <laughs> yeah, they, they... I won't spoil much, but... All the awesomeness that was the later half season of Agents of Shield, and definitely the Winter Soldier, gone. And you'll 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 see it. Looks like they they might come up with something to make up. Done. That irritates me to no end. As far as the twins go, they felt really good, well placed. They were really played their characters well. They weren't the strongest, but I and I thought the accents were kind of cheesy, especially from a Brit and an American, but. They were okay, and the characters were good. I, they, like Hawkeye, they just have to grow. Hawkeye and Winter, they just have to grow. Uh, seeing War Machine, 
Arodi was great. Tia Maria Hill was great. There um, might be spoilers, though. Yeah, it kind of would be, I think. Yeah. Um, and now that there's other characters in the movie that will definitely be spoilers, spoilers, including a couple people you've seen in past movies and Andy Serkis' role. Won't give him a name, you probably know, but Andy Serkis played his role out. He didn't even have to be in um, uh, in a mocap costume this time, motion capture costume this time. They all did well. And finally, Ultron. Uh, Ultron. James, James Spader as Ultron is like Reddington of uh, the Blacklist, and it was perfect. I was worried because I saw a couple clips where uh, Ultron was being jovial, like Reddington. It's like, no, 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 don't make this massive monster joke all the time. <laughs> and it, I thought that was pretty nice. <laughs> you, you know, a lot of people complained about. Uh, Malakath and uh, oh, yeah. Ronan the Accuser for being humorless douches, and I didn't mind that, but when Ultron was just like cracking wise and being funny, I said, this is amazing, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm just glad he didn't do it all the time, and that made me happy. There's one other character, well, the character will count from the past, technically, so I won't do that, but Ultron was a great villain. He's He, he ranks up there next to Loki, and between Loki and and the Iron Monger, Jeff Dan, Jeff Bridges, excuse me. They, he's one of the stronger Marvel cinematic movie villains. Uh, Blue? Actually, I thought the characters in this film were awesome. I know that we already know the foundational characters, and they always do their job in a stellar and flawless way. Um, but the addition of the new folks that you, you haven't seen before, like the twins, you know, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. I think they did a really great job because it is very hard to stack up against and hold your own with, you know, strong cast members such as the ones that play these other um, adversaries. I'll say that. I know that's a little bit of a spoiler there. But nonetheless, um, James Spader, he always has my heart. I've loved him for a very long time. He never disappoints. I don't care what I've ever seen him do. He always does it in fine and regal fashion, and this is no exception. It's rare that you get a chance to see a metal um, uh, robot with personality. I mean, my first shot at personality was with, was with Chappie. I, I gotta say, mm -hmm. I, I love Chappie yeah. and what he brought to the I'm screen. I'm surprised all you people didn't. Chappie was awesome. Chappie I was loved awesome. him. I really did. And then um, when I get to see what James Spader has done with Ultron, that's a big plus. Because you, you have a tendency to lump these characters' personalities with their um, roles that they've had in the past. Ultron has always been very robotic and very deep-voiced and gutty-throated and, you know, very domineering and... Uh, we are the Borg. Resistance yeah, is free yeah, to... Uh, uh. But this was light and airy and, and comedic in some ways. And, you know, he added his own special James Spader style. And, oh my goodness, he had one-liners that, you know, <laughs> really did keep you cut. Yeah. And, and I just thought that was great. And then at the same time, he still exhibited in his role that of a very calculating and cold and ruthless um, determined determined um, artificial intelligent super robot fighting robot yeah so you know I can't say enough for that and then I'm not going to spoil it for you but folks there are some nice surprises um, in the form of other characters that you'll see in the film I think you will enjoy it it kind of brings it full circle it's like a Kind of like a warm friend that you haven't seen in a while. Like, hey, yeah, how you doing? And then you catch up. And see, in the past, you see some of these different roles where you have, like, the, the twins. You didn't really care about them when they, you know, either died or, or, or you know, fell off the face of the earth. And I'm not saying that's what happens here. But, you know, there wasn't enough detail paid to their you know, backstory, so to speak. So you really didn't identify them 
with that that much. I think that was one of the problems with the Expendable 3 movie. You know, the new characters were introduced, and there were a lot of them, but you really didn't care all that much yeah. about them. Whereas these guys, you know, there were some attempts at some backstory, not once, but twice, maybe three times, and in which time they made attempts for you to care about how they turned out. You saw how they cared about one another, and ultimately you know, you, you drew closer to wanting to see them in in the rest of the movie. So overall, I think they did a fine job. They didn't disappoint with their banter amongst themselves, which was nice to see because it gave a human side to our superheroes. And the Avengers, they're just a pleasure to watch on the screen. They are. Well, I really can't add to much of that, really, because you guys said it all, quite literally. I would just like to add one more thing to it, is that this is going to be spoiler town, people, so if you don't want to hear, skip a couple of minutes, as that is the infamous Dr. Claw, though in this thing, he is not a doctor, he's just an arms dealer. But for those who know who Dr. Claw is, he is the... Uh, no, wait, wait, that, Dr. Claw is uh, the guy from Inspector Gavin. Oh, right. What's his name? Just Claw. Or or Ulysses Claw. Ulysses Claw? I thought that, he was a doctor. He... he well, you know what? He prob he's he is, probably a he doctor. A doc he is a doctor. Just, two... They just don't call him Dr. Claw. Well, you're probably the right. Claw, we'll, nonetheless. The Claw, then. We'll just go with Claw, then. For all intents and purposes. And that was Andy Serkis' role. Another spoiler. Yeah, like like you said before. Really? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, anyway, his role... Although it's quick... You know that guy's coming back, first of all. Oh, yeah. And second of all, I did what the little screen time he had, he did very well. Oh, yeah. He, he was definitely, had some personality as well. And, you know, he, he lost a little personality at the end of his scene, but uh, I'm sure he'll get that back in spade. You'll know what I mean when you see the movie. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely enjoyed his um, his arms dealer routine. It was very good. Uh, and, shoot, Ultron was great, the Avengers were great, you know. Uh, there was one character I did not know, and it was at the final scene, it was a young guy helping out, I'll just say, for the relief at the end, uh, when you know what showed back up, and... Oh, I know who you're talking about. He was saying stuff, and who was that guy? Oh, I'm there was a lot of camera time for him. I'm gonna have to read the credits. He might be important later on. Okay. I, I've never heard of him either. No, no. And, and for that matter, there was another character, Helen Cho, the the doctor from, yeah. from the beginning. I didn't know her either, mm -hmm. but she might be related to another Marvel character. It, it might be, but all in all, the characters as it stands were par excellent as always. So, let's get with the goods and the bads of this movie. Uh, uh, anyone wants to start, or shall I? You, just, you start this time. Backlash? Uh, yeah, let me see. <sighs> Whew, the goods. Huh? Action was good. Story was good. Character interactions, for the most part, was good. Um, lots and lots of cameos. Lots and lots of surprises. Um... With everything people say, like, oh, this trailer's ruining the movie. This trailer's ruining the movie. <laughs> and you know that, what? They, they love to say that. Why do they say that now? Well, in this case, it was true. A lot of the stuff I saw from the movie, shot for shot, or even in the little smaller trailers I saw, oh, this is where Lisa leads in. It didn't prepare me for the end of the movie, okay? <laughs> this, the end of the movie was quite strange why Ultron would do that, but at the same time, it... I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And also, you people who say that, stop saying that. No one's putting a gun to your head and saying, you gotta watch this trailer! Do it now! Do it! <laughs> if you have so much problem with it, then don't watch the trailer. And a lot of times people will say that and they haven't seen the movie, so how do they know that the trailer ruined the movie? Oh, yeah. And, it, nitpicker, hypercriticals, I'm done. So, you know what? Good movie? Um, It's just... Good. Uh, I there's there's some bads, but I'll get to that later. Most of the bads are nitpicks. I'm telling you that right now. But good, everything. I have nothing else to say about it. It, it was very. I'm sorry. No, okay. It was very good for me too, all around. I mean, every scene was great. It had appropriate amount of action. It did not have too much action 
I'm talking to you people who've said that, and you know who you are. I the it character. It was well paced. It was well paced. Yes, yeah, so it was very, very well paced. I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, the characters, like we said before, were very good. New ones, you know, they had to build them up a little better, but I'm sure that will come in time, especially how the movie ended. Um, I think we the have... action was great. I loved it, and of course, I'll, I I will say this because it's not a bad thing of the movie, but it's not a good. It's just a uh, social commentary about uh, certain fight scenes in the movie. It was an awful lot of destruction. You know, I say like an obscene amount. Oh yeah. And I would, mm-hmm. and I'm awful wondering if any of you people out there who said the Man of Steel had super amounts of destruction, uh, we're going to oh, say yeah. anything about that yeah. now. And they're probably going to say, oh, well, you know what? The Avengers and stuff helped most of the people and saved their butts. And you know what? The, 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 the. And I say to you, sir, that is unrealistic. And plus, Man of Steel didn't have the Avengers to help him when he was fighting General Zod. It was just him. Yeah. The army was fighting other things, and, you know, really, it's not a bad thing on the movie's part. It's just my particular type of irritation. Uh, but I'll discuss that more on the bads almost. Just a, just a nitpick, again. Well, I think, too, on that note, I think with the um, amount of destruction, it didn't really result in... A lot of loss of life, which is good. I think it's, things blew up, but you know, beyond that, it really wasn't, uh, you know, blood and guts thrown across the screen as we see in so many movies today. They feel that they have to throw red everywhere and have it flowing and oozing and literal body parts. And after the body's dead, then somebody has to take a knife to the corpse and show us every little detail. Fortunately, the Avengers stay away from that sort of thing. I guess that might be the Disney influence. Not sure, but I like that. I like the fact that I can see things blow up, and I don't have to see in 3D a limb fly right into the camera, <laughs> splat on the screen. I'm glad of that. Um, I actually enjoy, too, the fact that I do see so much action. I come to the movies to see it, and I'm not disappointed when I went to this movie. I got that uh, feedback from a lot of folks out there about the overuse of C, 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 G. CG. I did not believe that I felt that. I saw some evidences of CG here and there, but over, well, overwhelmingly I thought it was very well done. It, it met with the scene required, and I didn't feel that it was obvious. I didn't see unnecessary use of green screen and costuming that, you know, you could see somebody running around with little balls taped to them <laughs> so that they could look real. It was very well done. And it was, uh, it meant with what was required for the action in the scene. And I actually did enjoy it quite a bit. Um, there's so much fantasticness that took place in the movie. You know, you would think after you see Robert Downey playing the part of Iron Man so many times in that suit that you would no longer see anything new. But we did see new stuff from him on the screen in the suit doing new stuff, and that was really neat to see. Mm -hmm. And I could say even just the idea of Thor having a little surprise here and there, that was nice. I mean, each character brought things to the screen that they haven't brought in the past. So, you know, in previous movies, they were so enjoyable. So to add the little cherry on top in this movie was just an added plus. I think it's nice to see the get together of some of those old friends that we talked about. That also was a nice plus. And that, you know, the role of James Spader wasn't just a role of James Spader. No, he got a chance to make his debut. And throughout the movie, he was integral. So he kept you guessing in some cases. And even down to the very end, for me, in my mind, there was guess. So I loved the storyline. I loved the characters. I loved the action. I think the movie was just overall well done. All right, now for the bads. Who's going first this time? I can go first on that okay. because I don't really have any bads. Mine are, are like you guys. It, it's just a nitpick thing for me. I enjoyed the movie so much that if there was anything about any of it that could be considered bad, <laughs> it's it's very minimal. I think the something to 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 know that 
when seeing the continuation of the movie, you really do expect to see more influence of where S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA intersect and what the relevance is with HYDRA, where are they now, and how they're influencing the whole, um, you know, pick up where it left off. But that didn't really happen. I don't think there was a lot mentioned about HYDRA for whatever reason. It was clearly a story about Ultron, but it kind of left you hanging on, well, how's this all fit into the grand scheme of things? I know HYDRA did devastation, but it kind of was not clear in my mind as to where it left off and what's being done about them. So that was my only real nitpick. I had maybe one other that I can't think of. If I think of it while you guys are talking, I'll add it. But other than that, I think that was my biggest single thing. Yeah, I have. You're absolutely right about that. And, and when the movie starts, this is not a spoiler. They were just attacking Hydra. And as it turns out, Hydra was inventing new tech from, uh, from Loki's staff. But... I, I don't understand how, you know, what that was the end goal for Hydra, especially for Vera Von Strucker. I mean, was Strucker trying to create, like, like Ultrons all this time? What was his plans? What was he going to do? Uh, what in, why did it involve uh, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch? Uh, you know, his actions in the movies, when you see it, will be even more confusing. Why did, why did he do that when he could have done this? He could have used those weapons he developed to fight the Avengers. It, it was very confusing. And, you know, also, what's in Loki's staff is even more confusing. <laughs> I mean, wh all this time that was in there, and it's alive, and, and it's like... What, and it helped make Ultron what he is today. It, and what else? There was something else, too. Um, uh, yeah, what else? Here, I'll go while you Yeah, you, while I'm thinking, you go. Okay, <laughs> so, so on the, on the Bash Hydra trade, uh, <laughs> so, you know, again, the season, the first half of the season two of the Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., and of course, Winter Soldier made Hydra out to be this big, bad, villainous group. And I don't mind them getting their tails kicked and uh, and uh, try to regrow their heads, you know. <laughs> but the way they did it, the, the, the Shield, Age of Shield is about to end. And now that I saw this movie, it's pretty much the end. Did they? They came out with a bag, and instead of just progressively depowering Hydra. For the time being, because they're villains in a comic book related movie franchise, let me pack. But this incarnation of Hydra just went out with a whimper. It did went <laughs> out with. And, and, go ahead. Go, keep going. Keep going. All right, and you know what? That's that's the most disappointing thing about the movie is because we're so used to seeing secondary villains, and because of secondary villains, they don't get the star treatment, which is obvious. This is Ultron's show, but. For all the menace and threat that Hydra put into the Marvel Universe, this is how their story ends for now. It's like, okay, you guys are done. You, 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 you are, you're strong, you're buff. We have you, we have you do this big bad thing and, uh, and, uh, and, and through S.H.I.E.L.D. And we're going to take over. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, so that was my biggest pet peeve, but I have a list of nitpicks. Let's see. Betty Ross not acknowledged in this movie at all because I do think it's important via spoiler purposes. Nitpick. Um, a character seen in this movie and like a screen time for him. Nitpick because there's no some... Colson. Huh? I remember no Colson. Yeah, Where yeah. was Colson? No well, Coulson. that's a, that's also that's also as a that's a big spoiler. Yeah. Big spoiler, but suffice to say, no. If you watch the Ace of the Shield, you know what he was gonna do in the. And it was quite surprising because the Ace of the Shield all but introduced the whole idea there's a of the Avengers. For that. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll explain it later, I'm sure. Well, yeah. but the the whole point is he was supposed to be in the movie. Well, that you know that. Long story short, Joss Whedon, 
I yeah. know he doesn't like it, but he's supposed to be there anyway. He was in the previous movies. He was. But, you know. He, he transcended from movies to TV. It would have made, yeah, I agree. I, I think that that's a disservice. They brought but, the man back from the dead. Might as well use him. Yeah, <laughs> but that that would be a good explanation. But Josh has been trying to kill him off for a long uh, time. No, right. He's just, he is my magnum opus. I have crafted him to be the ultimate bland pencil pusher for my agent uh, for S.H.I.E.L.D. and he will die and he will spur the <laughs> Avengers along in their progression for justice. What What do you mean people like him? What What do you mean people want to see him again? You're making a show? Oh, he was supposed to die. All right. Well, can I get back to my nitpicks now? I, yeah. I agree. I agree. So let me see. So a uh, certain character that did make it into a movie didn't get a lot of screen time, and I like this character. Nitpick. I don't expect you to go on there. I expect you, you to die. die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. A character, another character that was supposed to be in this movie. I might as well. Yeah, I might as well say it. Loki was definitely supposed to be in this movie. Yes, and I he, missed he, his You think so? You he, think so? I mean, he was cast. Even if he, he, he was just even a, just a cameo. Yo, know, Idris Elbus accidentally spilled the beads, you know. Pretty much Joss was not happy about that. He said, me and Loki, yeah, me and Tom Hiddleston, yeah, we're in this movie. <laughs> but they cut up for time. So Loki's not in this movie at all, which is a shame. Uh, yeah, that that would have been a nice. Cameo. I gotta say, I was surprised to even see Idris Elba in the movie. But but Loki, well, that's not a bad thing for me. That's a nitpick. It's for story reason. I understand that. Let's see what else. Uh, let me. I'm, I'm now. I'm having a brain fart. I, I, I'll, I'll help you with this while you're having your brain fart. The teaser, um, the the teaser at the end. Not as good as teasers yeah, that we've seen. Yeah, that was that, weak. yeah, that's the other it thing. It was lame. It was kind. Of, it was really kind of lame. I kind of thought it was cool. No, no, I, leading to where it was going. I think I I wanted to have a nice like minute teaser for the next like upcoming. They always do. Yeah, and well, something that says like this is happening. The Avengers won today again, and that's happening, and this is the result. And everyone, you know, marks out like they're in a wrestling event for John Cena versus The Undertaker. But well, here's the thing about that. That's also a nitpick because they delivered us so much action. I can't really ask for too much more. But you, they did give you a scene that they, one scene, and not like multiple scenes. Like the original Avengers movie in Thor The Dark World gave you. They gave you a serious scene. And then they gave you a comedy scene. Oh, look at the alien dog Malakathy and Kerr still running around through England. Oh, look at them eating shawarma like they've been so dogged out tired. Oh. I wish they had a second teaser like I thought they were going to do. They would have ate like maybe pizza. Or, yeah, or something. Or they would have tried to lift Thor's hammer again. That was hilarious. Or, yeah, or Mark hilarious. Ruffalo just kicking back on a beach, right. and I said, "I'm taking a day off." Yeah, yeah. you know. And then there was the other minor nitpick, minor yeah. as it was, and I, I, it kind of could be a spoiler, so I'm not going to get too specific with it. Characters, and I think even Backlash kind of alluded to this, just kind of kept disappearing, and you just didn't know where they went. And yeah, I mean, so I, that was kind of minor. I that, yeah. I didn't really notice that much. Well, out, off camera, I'll tell you because you know it really was disturbing. Then, like, here you now you're here. Okay. I, 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 well, one, one more thing for me. Last nitpick. Because the Black Widow was preggers, and I knew she was preggers. The way they shot around pregnant, her, not pregnant for people who uh, use the King's English. Preggers is something you have for lunch. Oh, pregnant. Uh, go ahead. But uh. You know, it's like the black the way they shot around the Black Widow's pregnancy, uh, Scarlett Johansson's pregnancy kind of took me out of her scenes a bit. I understood them, but it's no big deal, you know. So nitpick theater over. Go ahead. I never noticed it myself personally, but that's just me. Um, two things. These are actually non nitpicks. I dare say these are probably legit problems with the movie. But again, this is just me. So the first one. And this is was in the trailer, so this is not spoiler. The vision. He looked weird to me. He kind of looked like a plastic man. He was plastic. <laughs> he was like he was he's supposed to be made out of some weird vibranium plastic. Uh human cell kind of guy. Was plastic. They said but plastic. He he was like weird plastic. Oh, that explains it. There's it was there was a whole scene. <laughs> Move the adventure getting oh that makes sense. I I didn't know that made oh that look, makes just sense. Just because he's made out of plastic doesn't mean he has to look like plastic. <laughs> it was weird. 
It was, it was weird. <laughs> I would have liked for him to be a little bit more, you know, well, metallic -y. Well, you know what? I think they finally wanted to reward Paul Bettany for all his hard work as Jarvis. All those, all those uh, Iron Man and Avengers films. So they, they made him the role, and he kind of looks like Don Cheadle, which is okay. He because... doesn't. He, he, he just looks so plasticky. Well, it's kind of cool though. I don't. I not. It? And... This is just a prototype setting up for the toys, don't you know? The one scene where they were all going this but... way, and they were just all right. That's a. These are toys. I can see this now. Going to be on the shelves. The for cart, the cartoon. Earth's Mighty Sears had a better toy than that one. Ah, uh, these toys are going to be on the he, shelves. He looks summer. too skinny. <laughs> United States Stan had a better toy than that one. Dave. I bet United States say remember that, kids. Uh, even the White Vision. I would have loved to see the, the White. Vision. The White Vision could still work, but I'm gotten used to the multicolor clown <laughs> Vision now. <Yeah. laughs> but okay. And now the second part, and this is just me, but I think, again, when I said earlier, due to the fact that uh, uh, Man of Steel had so much destruction and everyone lost their two nuts and uh, pivots about it, they were like, over exaggerating the we got to help the people amidst the destruction right now like right now are you helping the people yes are you still helping the people right. yes are you really helping the people right. yes look at them they're going that right. way they had two social workers yes. five cops a SWAT yes. team yes. a can of soup yes. and, a, and, a, and a chopper five choppers for each one of them ready to go right now let's go go Get them away from this battle. It's already a mile away, but get them even farther. Farther from the action. They are safe as houses. We built them a house that is made out of vibranium. Nothing's going to happen to them. They are safe. Did you save the people? Yeah! And that's how I felt. I mean, like, like Blue said, yes, saving innocence is good. That's always good, but when you show them being saved once, you don't need to show them being saved <laughs> ten times in ten different ways and angles and forms. We get it. They're safe. Now get back to the action. You know, you know I what? want to see the fight, please. You know what? I, I gotta say, the spoiler character waving a machine gun in that one place, that wasn't the best idea that inspired people to do what you want. It, it was, that part was funny, I'll admit. <laughs> there were a lot of fun It was things. funny, but it's like, oh uh, yeah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> well, my other last Nick Pitt is, and I, I this is definitely a spoiler, but I'm not gonna say too much. There was something that happened toward the end that I did not like. Mm. And Didn't like that scene? No. No, I did, but again, I blame Fox for that because everyone liked character insert here and marvel did not like that reaction so they did this action to yeah. counter you think so kind of i know so oh that's terrible that was I, terrible there yeah. was no reason for for that to happen and but... i'm hoping that it, it can be reversed in some way yes because that really was well, a disappointment hate to break it to you but the lazarus pits in another comic book <laughs> company's continuity <laughs> but you, but the power of cartoons what can you say hey yeah. you know they brought colson back I mean, yeah they did tahiti project so right there you have it but that's all i got yeah and that's all i'm pretty much i i got my two cents out of the way so rating no surprise, right? No surprise, right. What about you? It's a big duff for me. Yeah, I got nothing to add here. Except this is the one true Omni Gamer Boss Bronze. And the first lady of media, Blue. And the information emperor, True Backlash. Telling you that the age of Ultron is a good age. It's a good one. Enjoy it. Platinum Don't pass, baby. <laughs>